I already had a video made on this, but there's a new development, so we're just going to start from scratch on this. Now, if you haven't heard, they're changing up the way Mythic Plus is going to work from kind of like a top-down level, being like you're going to only do uh, dungeons that they tell you you're going to do, and they're not going to be actual Dragonflight dungeons. Uh, I think the best way to summarize it is they planned on making eight dungeons for Dragonflight and only using four of them for season one and then there'd be four other dungeons now in the previous video i talked about like uh what what dungeons those could be and my my original complaint was like did we just vote for the wad dungeons and then the top two win for season four of bfa or season four of challenge and then the next two are going to be in the next pool or something like that like it seems clear to me that season four of shadowlands is is incredibly important going forward it's kind of just like a dry run for them and seeing, you know, what works. And uh, honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm not excited for this. Like, I mean, I, it was like a 30 minute video about basically why I didn't want to do it, but settle down now. I try to try to think about things a little bit more like objectively. And I will say that, you know, being actually, um, as long as they can make the dungeons good and compelling. And so like my whole opinion on this is going to not, be known until season four of bfa and the thing that i said the most back then was like why is this being decided now like we don't even have season four of bfa yet and they're already talking about season one of dragonflight i don't understand what the point of telling us this now is it doesn't really make any sense but uh, it has spawned a very interesting topic so let's you know close that chapter and we'll talk uh, talk now about what this chapter is about uh, but before i do close that one i just want to say like you know, they're revamping Oldman, right? And that's going to be a part of the pre-patch, apparently. We saw that in an interview. And it makes me wonder, like, is that now considered a Dragonflight dungeon? Or are they actually going to be considering, like, adding, like, even, like, classic dungeons uh, to the Mythic Plus pool? Like, I don't know what they mean by revamping it. Uh, obviously, I would expect it to be an entirely new dungeon. Uh, the question is just like, what does it actually have to do with Dragonflight? What happens to the old version? Uh, unfortunately, like with the old dungeons, they, like Skolomance and stuff, the old versions just get removed. So I would imagine that is gone for good, which I know <laughs> at least one person will be upset about because uh, there's a lot of rare transmogs that can only be obtained through Oldman, I believe, because of the level uh, of those mobs. It's the only place in the game now that they exist because of the scaling and everything. So... Anyway, uh, I'm not a big fan of that, and I hope that they will keep the old version in. Uh, but let's take a look at this, because I, I, I guess, regardless, the TLDR of that whole topic was like, uh, they're making eight new dungeons. What, what The question is, like, why the hell are you making eight dungeons and not using them for season one, right? Like, that should be season one. Season one should be the eight new dungeons. And then, if you want to try to keep things fresh, you start mixing things up from there. You don't need to try to preemptively keep things fresh, like... I, the, quest, the the thing I, I also posed there, it's like, why would it, nobody's going to do the dungeons. Like, this is going to be awful, dude. It's basically like you're going to be adding eight new dungeons the next season because very few people are actually going to do Mythic Zeros, right? Like, there's no real reason to do them other than the first few weeks. And, and, and especially because, you know, this is something that they're not uh, doing until, like, the season starts, which is usually at least three weeks into the expansion. So we're talking about something so far down the road, you've actually missed, you, you missed the, like, you missed the point, right? You're talking about adding new dungeons that people are now talking about skipping. Like, what, what, you're trying to get excitement, right? Like, you're trying to build excitement for new dungeons, aren't you? It just doesn't even make sense. So anyway. Let's read this whole thing, and I have a lot of comments on this. It was revealed yesterday that the first season of Mythic Plus and Dragonflight would consist of four new dungeons and four old ones. And while I think that idea is interesting, it exposes quickly a problem Blizzard has failed to recognize in recent tiers and expansions. Item accessibility. Some classes and specs will be hurt simply by the fact that you don't have access this tier to those really good items in the other four dungeons. You might not be able to get a weapon in Mythic Plus for your tier or your trinket, and that creates many frustrations. Old dungeon gear won't be as optimized as the current ones. And that's a nice, um, you know, concise point. And so I think this guy's thinking about it wrong, though, to be honest. Like, first of all, let's talk about what this means. 
Uh, it means that they're not idiots and that they're actually planning on trying to keep things balanced, right? Like you have to assume that. And and we would know for sure if season four of Shadowlands was already out and we were able to look at the pool of items, right? Because it is an important point. Like if all of a sudden in season four of Shadowlands, all those dungeons that are in there, they don't contain a viable slew of items. Like what, what actually happens? Could we never get a scale again? Yeah, I think that's the case, right? Like, that's it. The other side's gone. So we'll never use that trinket again. So in Season 4 of BFA, we'll be stuck using Season 3 gear if we want that gear. Because that's it. Like, once that season ends, presumably you cannot get that loot again. And presumably they're going to make the entire vault slew of choices that's going to be all the new dungeons. The ones that are in Season 4, not the Season 3 and prior dungeons, right? So we don't know the answer to that. Because they're talking about something that's now two full seasons away when we don't even know the crazy changes that are coming this, like, the next few months, right? Like, it's, why are you bringing this up now? I mean, I get it. They're trying to be um, more proactive on getting feedback. But it's like, dude, we don't even know what's happening with the philosophical approach for the current thing you're doing that's absurd. Why would we be talking about the next absurd thing you're doing? (laughs) Uh, but so, yeah, the, the question is, what happens to the item pool? Is it going to change? Uh, so this guy has some solutions to it, but it, it's less interesting than I think. A Valor could be used to buy a targeted piece from the other four dungeons. And that would actually be awful. Um, but let's talk about that in a second. Giving you a choice to either upgrade item level, the gear you farmed, you buy the piece, spec really needs from the inaccessible dungeons. If we were to use the current season as an example. Okay. So, uh, so Valor, let's talk about Valor. So presumably, so this is another question that we don't have the answer to, right? Presumably you'll still be able to do mythic zero the other side and upgrade that with Valor. I mean, I don't know, right? Like what are they doing? That's what I said. Like a month and a half ago, I made a video about why season four was going to be bad And I said it was all going to come down, good or bad, it was going to come down to whether or not the gearing process makes sense. It's all about gearing, right? Because, like, you have this weird approach here where you're throwing in items from five years ago. I mean, more than that, right? Seven or eight years ago at WAD. It's like, you're just making a complete mess out of this. It's everybody knows what they want from the dungeon. And, and, And Ian's response is actually, like, really confusing because... It's like the complete opposite approach I would imagine a developer would take. But yeah, so like, what are we doing with Valor? Can we still use it to upgrade gear for Mythic Zero? Because currently, if you do Mythic Zero to the other side, you can get that trinket and then upgrade it 14 times to max item level. That's possible, right? But there is no Mythic Zero. Well, I mean, I guess technically there is. But there is no Mythic Zero uh, Grimrail Depot, right? I mean, there is technically, but it's going to give you gear that's not shadowlands gear so so i said that in the the previous failed video as well like what what the hell happens to the dungeons like you make olderman uh, and maybe not a great example but like you make a dungeon that doesn't have a relevant mythic zero does that get raised as well or do you walk into a mythic zero that's like 40 item levels lower than you or 40 levels lower than you or whatever you know i just i don't actually know how it works now like if i go into a mythic zero in wad right now the mobs are are not scaled, right? They're they're they got to be like level thirty or thirty five or something, forty maybe. I don't actually know, but I assume they're not scaled up. So you just walk in there, and then there's a dais there, and it turns it into a Shadowlands dungeon. I I I just don't know. It seems like there's a lot more in here than people think. So anyway, another solution would be the same concept, but with coins you get from the vault. Right now, a bad vault is just frustrating. Slightly better with the socket, but it's still nowhere near the value of good RNG. Uh, with maybe two weeks of coins, buying an item from those other dungeons seems entirely fair to me. And that could work too. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. A third solution would be to simply replace the four old dungeons loot with the new one. No, you're missing the third solution. You have it in Shadowlands right now. And I don't know, like, I really do hope that the creation catalyst is something that we can move forward with. Because to me, man, it seems like the ultimate solution to all the problems with gearing in mythic plus it's such a great idea just allow like right now you can take items from mythic plus and turn them into raid items and you could do the same like world content and like pvp gear but you can do nothing with raid items like raid items 
cannot be used in the creation catalyst, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they could be turned into tier, I guess. You could take a non-tier from the raid and turn it into tier. But it's kind of like pointless to do that, right? It's like doesn't really make a lot of sense. But so imagine if you had a creation catalyst from Mythic Plus. You know what I mean? And and I think that solves all the problems. Because it's like we, we have uh, a very, very, very wide pool of gear. Now you're going to be messing with it every freaking season. Like, l literally, you, you know? So if season one has, uh, you know, the, the bl blood patterned scale or whatever it's called, you know, the, some big trinket that you want. And then season two, that thing's gone. doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's like literally gone, right? I mean, this is just a freaking bad idea. I, I don't know how else to say it. It's just dumb. It's really not a good idea. I'm not really sure what their point, the, the thought process is here. In the other video, I talked a lot about, like, actual progression as well. Like, I said about golf, right? Like, if I went and played golf, and every time I played golf, they mixed up what hole was 1 and what hole was 17 and what hole was 3, and you just had to play the course in, like, a random order. And it's like, dude, I can't. Like, this is not how long-term progress should work, dude. Like, if we have, you know, four seasons of dungeons then they should be get you should be getting better at them. They shouldn't be changing. It's so substantially that you have to relearn them. And you know, this is coming from somebody who's trying to help people. Like so so now like trying to help people is it's going to be very very difficult for me because I'm now going to have to relearn everything myself. So it's going to take months again for me to be confident enough that I can actually help people. I and mean, this is just really a uh, I don't know why you do this to be honest. I really don't. Like I don't know what the idea is here. It just seems like to me they're like they're, they're playing a game now with people who like have like five minute attention spans. It's like, oh, well, we get it. You can't possibly do the same done. I, and, and this is, you know, I just don't feel like I'm the same player that the game used to care about. Like in Cataclysm, we would literally run dungeons. All I remember like running dungeons it, like a year and a half into that expansion. It gave nothing. dude. There was no Mythic Plus. You know what I mean? It was literally pointless. I just like dungeons. And it was like, you know, you can gear up alts and stuff. It was still fun. Like, it, there doesn't need to be this, like, oh, we get it. You can't possibly do the same dungeon for a year. It's like, no, dude, that's the, how the game has worked forever. It's 17 years like this. You know what I mean? Dungeon content is, is evergreen. It has potential to always be interesting. And you've already made a system to make it always interesting. We don't need to keep iterating on that system, man. It works excellent. Fix the goddamn problems with people leaving and all this nonsense, you know? It's like, man, I don't... Making new dungeons, I don't think that helps anybody. Like, not even new dungeons, like, re, re, uh, just kind of tuning, like, just flipping the dungeons over for no reason. And if you want to make new ones, at least people would probably like that more. Okay, so this is Ian Hazakosis in the thread. Let's see what he says. Itemization is definitely a big piece of how this will all fit together in order to work. And the goal would be for each season's dungeon pool to provide deep and varied loot options. In some cases, that may mean modifying or su supplementing loot from older dungeons, older expansions, dungeons. So good. He's, he's saying that, like, you know, we get it. Uh, we need to make sure that the old, you know, like you add a dungeon that literally has uh, no trinket in it whatsoever. Then something has to change there. Um, you know, and that's that's good to hear that. We'll see what it means and what dungeons they choose and how they choose them. Anyway, if we were to mix in Mythic Plus versions of MOP dungeons alongside Dragonflight dungeons, for example, we'd make sure that the resulting seasonal pool provides full itemization coverage for all specs. It's like, And so then, like, yeah, it's like you're almost just taking, like, a shell. Like, it's like, okay, the dungeon is the shell. Everything else we control. Uh, and that's at least better than the alternative. So let's see what we can learn from this. It's likely that we'd also take a close look at trinkets in particular for Mist Dungeons, which weren't necessarily created or tuned with cutting-edge performance in mind. Yes, exactly. And that's so that's another big problem, like Mob Dungeons. And I said this about the Wad Dungeons when we made that video about Grimrail Depot. The gear in those dungeons were, like, they were actually objectively worse than raid items at the time. Like, they were tuned so you wouldn't be uh, inclined to wear them for a long period of time in Season 1. Uh, during uh, MSV, right? So it's like, you know, I remember that. Like, I remember the items were just like, if you had uh, even an LFR raid item, which would have been the same, uh, I think it was like the same item level as like a heroic dungeon item back then, it was actually just better numerically. Like, it actually had more stats on it. So um, they have some tuning to do there. Well, they have a lot to do, to be honest. But uh, anyway, yeah. Okay, if we end up landing in a situation where a specific item from the prior season's dungeon was beating higher item level alternatives from the following season, we'd make tuning adjustments to correct that. 
you shouldn't need to worry about missable BIS being a thing. And that's like a big, no, you know, that would be a big deal. So that's good, I guess. It's good that they'll solve that problem, but I think they're creating the problem too. So it's kind of like, well, you have to solve it. So you can't really give credit for that. Anyway, on the other hand, we've heard tons of feedback about how refarming, soul letting Ruby IQD every season hasn't felt, uh, hasn't exactly felt like a compelling progression experience. So we're excited at the chance to shake things up. And that's where you lose me, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, who who's telling you that? Fucking casuals? Like, I mean, like, for real. Like, who actually is telling you that, dude? You got to do the dungeons. Like, I just don't really get it. Like, you, you get gear. The dungeons give gear. But they also are the progression that you do. So when you do the other side, 25, and you get the trinket eventually, you, you get it. Like, I mean, I get it. There's people out there. I mean, I know a few who literally just sit there and farm dungeons for gear. And maybe if you do that three times in a year, yeah, you start to complain. But it's like, you don't, I don't think people have like a historical perspective here. They don't realize that at times uh, that was not even possible. Like, you know, you would get a uh, soul letting ruby and that would be only ever even remotely usable in the beginning of an expansion. And then the dungeons would never get a refresh gear wise. They would be the same, like, especially in Wrath. I remember like the dungeons literally were completely useless. Because the Nax was so freaking easy. And then they added like ketchups and TOC. It was like the dungeons actually were just like four tiers lower than everything else you would get. So when you have that historical perspective, you're like, yeah, let's keep going, man. I love this trinket from the raid. Love this trinket from the five man. But I can keep getting the five man trinket. And that's why I actually enjoyed the most. This expansion was like the dungeon trinkets were solid. They were considerably, you know, they were great, honestly. And they were better than raid trinkets in season one. And then season two, things started to even out and like a lot of really good raid trinkets. And now in season three, it's like, oh, that, we're kind of like figuring it out still, you know? It's like actually kind of exciting. It's like, well, I can always fall back on the dungeon trinkets. But then, in, you know, so imagine if in season three, instead of uh, the other side, now we're talking about like freaking Iron Docks. And it's like, hmm, I wonder if that Iron Docks trinket that they haven't talked about in 10 years is actually tuned to be good enough to compete with these raid trinkets. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, so no trinkets in the game from dungeons are valuable at all because the tuning, it's like, you're just making a mess of this. Like, it's it's really, uh, it's it's going to be a lot of work and it's just kind of silly. Um, and, and, and if this is the reason, if we've heard tons of feedback about refarming the same gear, you're talking to casuals. I mean, like, listen, I, I, I no offense, but like serious players are going to do the content anyway. Like, that's why... This, the content is the way it is. <laughs> you don't just farm the gear from it and stop. Like, you're supposed to progress through the content. So, you know, I didn't farm my scale. I just did the other side and potentially get score from it and improve as a player in it. And I got the I got the gear I needed from it. So, I mean, so you're basically... So, so like, the thing that he is saying this and, and why it's stupid is because it's like you're saying that and that solves a problem for those the people who aren't actually, like, doing Mythic Plus, like as a progression chain, but they're just going to be more unhappy now because refarming soul letting Ruby indicates that, you know, that's a trinket you want, right? Like I do that three times in an expansion. I really want that train. <laughs> that's what it means, right? So now you have a new trinket to farm. It doesn't change anything. The question is, I don't know what it is. You know, it's not like soul letting Ruby from season one is suddenly going to be you know, it's like, so, so there's season one trinket and then there's season two trinket, season two trinket. You still need, you, you need to get a new trinket, right? You can't use the season one, one in season two, right? You have to get a new one. So you're going to be farming something else that you don't even know what it is. And th th these types of people who are complaining about this, they, they're probably just going to get frustrated with that. They're like, oh, now I have to figure out all new gear. I can, I can already hear it, dude. I, I know exactly who I'm talking about. And it's not like a personal thing, but like, I know somebody personally who, doesn't like this and and there i could already hear what their new complaint is going to be it's going to be like oh great now i have to figure out a whole new best in slot list it's like just do the just play the content that's what it's there for <laughs> anyway aside from a complete itemization refresh from season to season our hope is for dungeon gameplay itself to feel fresher and like a new set of puzzles for the community to solve each season and and that's okay so let's let's just stop there so so that is a great idea if that was a problem and i don't know is it like do people think it is do people feel like a new 
puzzle every six months is something that they want to me no I, absolutely not but it is coming from a selfish perspective a biased perspective because i'm thinking like oh i want to help people i want to make videos on these dungeons now i'm also probably being short-sighted in that like yo dude that could be better for views like obviously to make new videos on new dungeons instead of new videos on old dungeons that should be better for me financially and as the channel progresses and stuff it's like great but i don't really like i don't care about them and i want to help people the most i can and i can't help them if i don't know that you know if i have to learn if it takes me three months to feel confident making these videos because there's going to be fucking clickbait artists out there who are going to be oh a 10 tips you need to know for skull of man's mythic plus it's like dude Let's be serious, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the best way to help people. So I'm trying to help people, and it's going to be very difficult now. Uh, and, and you know, that's a whole different problem. But it's just like, I don't... What new puzzles? Like, who cares, dude? The puzzles are solved, and it's difficult still. Like, you know? Like, does anybody do mists on Tyrannical and think like, ah, man, I know all the difficulty here. This is a joke. It's not fucking classic, dude. You know, you're, you're talking about something that needs to be done in classic. Make new raids for classic. You know what I mean? Make TBC new raids for TBC. That's the shit where they, they need a new puzzle because everything's solved and that the content's a joke. Mythic Plus is not a joke, dude. You go to 30, then no, it's not easy, man. Like, you don't need new puzzles. Uh, but I don't know. It's just like, I don't really see why they want to do that. And I think they're just looking at the wrong people for this. Anyway, we've seen really mixed, often negative experiences in the past when we add a brand new dungeon to an existing pool of dungeons that the community has already mastered. So that might be it. Like, that's actually the reason they're doing this, to be honest. And it's actually, I'm glad that he said these words because it changes, like, all of a sudden I'm on their side now. Like, legitimately. Because it's like, he wants to add new dungeons. They want to add wad challenge modes for whatever reason. Well, guess what? You can't just add those to the Shadowlands dungeons, which was something in the previous video that I didn't publish. Uh, maybe I'll put that in... in um, unlisted if you guys do want to watch it it's down there but anyway um yeah what i said in the previous video was like you know people are saying like oh just add all eight dragonflight dungeons and then add four more on top of that and even like people i've talked to like in my discord and stuff they're like oh yeah we want to have more dungeons but you don't dude you, i promise you you don't not in a world where keystone master works the way it does right you you want to do 20 dungeons right now because that's how many dungeons you'd have to do for keystone master theoretically or do you want to do 40 dungeons i think a lot of people don't really think about that right like if you're actually trying to get thresholds of score well yeah having 20 dungeons yeah it's like well basically what people are asking for having like 16 at least 16 dungeons uh yeah that's a lot man you, you're gonna want to do you know 30 some dungeons just to get a threshold and then keep climbing from there it's like for me i have i find a lot of trouble getting the key I need. So adding like twice as many of actual possible dungeons that, that can have keys, it's like, no, I don't really want that, dude. Like 10 is actually a perfect number in my eyes. Eight was good, but 10 is like maybe a little bit better because it's a little bit more diverse. But more than 10, you just start to never see, like, dude, I don't know when the last time I did Spires was. I did it just the other day to help some people, and I'm like, holy fuck, it's been like three weeks since I've done Spires. Like, you know what I mean? So anyway um okay let's see what this says the, the rest of this because that was kind of like a breaking point when i read this so <clears throat> brand new dungeons exist and ready master and try to set them up as equivalent in terms of difficulty and rewards and that's very difficult yeah and while the ha hardcore mythic plus community may uh not experience this issue firsthand oh no no they do experience it dude and that's why absolutely why they nerfed uh the dungeons um the the tazavesh dungeon because it was clear that that was an outlier at all levels Anyway, it's hard to overstate how daunting it can be for someone to try to get into Mythic Plus Pugs or try a new role like tanking. Well, I'm really glad you said that. For the first time, deep in an expansion. Uh, and so that's why I, I make videos, honestly. So tell them about me. <laughs> uh, when the established community is largely focused on routing micro-optimizations and time-saving tech. Yeah, and so this is actually a really interesting point, right? He's basically like further ext like extrapolating on why they have to do this and not just add new dungeons to the current pool. Uh, because uh, if everybody's worried about like, okay, we already know like the overarching strategy for uh, Mr. Turn of Scythe. Now let's work on like cutting 15 seconds off the timer. But then you have Tazavesh and it's like, we don't know anything about it. <laughs> so we have to go backwards. And so that's going to be really frustrating for new people who are in one group and, and not the other, you know. 
Groups likely assume complete baseline knowledge of all boss mechanics, positioning, target priority, and so forth. And so, like, this is like a social problem. And again, it's one that the player has the option to solve. Uh, so you're basically like, you know, treating this like preschool. It's like, ah, oh, no, you're not allowed to be skilled at these dungeons. And I get it, you know. I think it will be interesting. Like I said, a lot of my opinions on this are going to be, we'll see. You know, I'm waiting for season four, man. We don't know anything about that. We're still talking about season one Dragonflight, so we'll see. But uh, we'll, we're well of the well aware of the risk that it might be disappointing to not get to experience Mythic Plus versions of all eight Dragonflight dungeons during the first season. And, and they're still going to do it, so... But our hope is that mixing in some dungeons that have never before had Mythic Plus components, i.e. Shadow Pan Monastery. Like, why do you bring this up? Are you really doing Shadow Pan? That's like the, one of the worst ones. We'll make for a fun new experience there. And then in the long run, the complete rotation will be much, will make for a much healthier and more dynamic Mythic Plus experience over the course of the expansion. So to me, TLDR, I would say just do the eight new Dragonflight dungeons first. And then every season from then on, you start rotating in and out dungeons. I don't see why you would want this, um, why you would want people to wait four months. Uh, and how they're going to choose that, that's going to be a, I don't know. So anyway, long enough as it is. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about all this. I have a feeling this is going to be very controversial in the coming uh, year or so. Uh, but I did want to get this out because I do feel like, man, this is a really interesting topic. So. Let me know what you guys think about the gearing process, especially because this is what we're ultimately talking about here.